You're watching the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast, the show for men and women over 40 who want to thrive in midlife. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Prepare to be inspired, educated, challenged, or maybe all three on this episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. Kimmy Seltzer, welcome to the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast, a maximum episode. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited about this conversation. So am I. So am I, Kimmy. This is a topic I have not, not yet covered on the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. I'm excited. Let me introduce you to my audience. Kimmy, you are a confidence therapist. You're a dating strategist. You're an image expert. You're a certified coach. You're a matchmaker. Uh, you are unique in so many ways. You've got an amazing body of work. I've, I've watched your TED Talk. We, we, we have to hear something about that. You're a podcaster. We met at PodFest, a podcasting conference. Your podcast is The Charisma Quotient. I have been binge, binge listening to it, uh, even though I am not in the dating scene, but I'm really impressed and amazed by the how relevant what you're talking about, what you teach on, what you coach on, how relevant it can be to us in midlife and other areas of our life. So first, let's begin with, tell us your backstory. Tell us specifically about the red dress, because that's a big part of your backstory and how you got to where you are now. Yeah. Thank you for asking me about my story. Cause I, it, I always chuckle when I hear people reading back my bio and I, and thank you by the way, for not doing that. You just kind of like did it in a more conversational way because the real reason why I got into what I do is because of my own hot mess, my own story, you know, and never in a million years would I have thought that I would be doing what I do. Um, and so my backstory is, is that I was, Leaving, I don't know. I was leading a very traditional life, so to speak. I was a good girl from Chicago, living the Midwest dream. Have had the picket fence and the dog and a couple of kids. I still have the kids, by the way. But you see where the story is going. Um, I did have a husband at the time, and I practiced as a therapist in a very traditional way, right? And so my life. I thought was going on as planned until one day we all pick up and we move across the country. We plop down here in La La Land. I'm in Los Angeles now. And that's when the record stopped. Like that's when my whole life, my traditional life as I knew mm -hmm. it completely disappeared. And quite honestly, I did not know what I was going to do with my new life because as soon as we got here, we we ended up doing what all the other people here do, and that is get a divorce. I'm joking. I like to blame LA <laughs> like a lot, but we would have been here anyway, for sure. And I think it was us just being removed from kind of like an insulated cushion of our life where we were just faced with all these problems, you know, as those like the cushion was removed. So I really, and the, the kicker was here I am a therapist, right? I should know better. I should know how to like heal myself, get back out there, date and do all the things that I helped other people with. And mind you, up until that point, I really believed in working from the inside out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I did, I went to counseling myself. You and I were just chatting about this. I had a coach. I had like, I did all the work. Right. And everybody said to me, so Kimmy, you know, how are you doing? And are you going to go back out there and date? I said, oh yeah, but you know what? I'm just working on myself. I'm, I'm not really ready. But then as time went on, it became a crutch. I just sat there with analysis paralysis and doing the work became an excuse because I was really just fearful of taking action, of actually going out and doing something. Right. And so I really was stuck. I was stuck in my mindset. I was stuck in just this kind of cocoon that I was in. And really, if you had looked at me back then, if you're watching this on YouTube, you see I'm in this bright top. I would. I was not wearing bright colors at the time. I was all in black, maybe a splash of beige in my closet. And all my clothes were huge on me. And I, I literally looked like a hot mess. I mean, and again, this was in like a midlife kind of crisis. Like we, mm -hmm. you know, I know that that's really the focus of this podcast. And like, I could not believe that I was in this position. I never thought that that would be my life. Mm -hmm. And one day I just took a look in the mirror 
And this was kind of like what my TEDx talk was about because it was really that moment when I saw myself and I, I was horrified. And like, here I am with wearing nursing bras. It wasn't even nursing any longer still <laughs> with disheveled hair and ginormous clothes. I said, okay, enough is enough. I need to take action and stop just doing this thing. And so I decided to do something very untraditional and that is go shopping, shopping therapy, right? So <laughs> I go shopping because nothing actually was fitting me anymore. I didn't even realize I was losing weight. It was I was stressed out, that kind of thing. So it wasn't really necessarily for a good reason. But nonetheless, I mean, I just I, I nothing was fitting me. And I think I'm going to the store to up level myself. And what am I doing? No, I'm putting all black clothes in my arms. I'm doing the same darn mm, thing that I always okay. do. So this personal shopper, she was watching me and she comes up to me and she says, ma'am, I really think you should try this on. And she holds up this red dress that looked like three sizes too small. And it was red. I said, that's really sweet of you, but that's really not my size. And that's so not my color. She says, honey, that is your size. That is your color. Try it on. That is great. Just like that. That Just is like so that. awesome. And this is what I call my red dress moment that you were referring yeah. to. It, and really, what is that moment? It's the moment where you wake up. It's the moment where you have that epiphany and maybe you're in a trance. Like I literally felt like I was in a trance for a very long time. And it was like, poof. It was like, yeah, what am I doing? I'm just going through the motion. So I grabbed the dress and I squeeze into it like Cinderella. I turn around once again. And I just kept staring at myself and I was like, wow, I feel like a princess. Mm. And I just hadn't seen myself in that long, that for really it was a really long time that I had felt that way too. And so I bought the dress almost as a costume and I called it a costume because I didn't really think that it was me. I said, you know, I'm just going to go out there in the world. I'm going to wear this dress and what the heck, let's see what happens. And so I did. And I, Bernie, I wore it everywhere. I wore it to the coffee shops. I wore it to the grocery store. I took it upon myself to almost, it was like an experiment. And here's the kicker. I started noticing you men, you alien men who I thought like, oh my God, I, you know, I didn't know what to do in terms of flirting or putting myself out there. I noticed men noticing me mm -hmm. and I realized. What, what, oh what a surprise. <laughs> well, I know I was, no, I was totally surprised and you don't even realize that this whole time when I was in a trance, when I was in the black clothes, the black clothes was a cloak to keep me invisible from yeah. you all yeah. because I was really scared. Yeah. And so here's where kind of the birth of my new business came out of because I realized there was a symbiotic relationship between the outer and the inner when it comes to confidence, that it's not superficial. How we appear on the outside, how we move through life, the energy that we have, what we put on our bodies, our body language, all really directly impacts how we feel inside and vice versa. So in that, I just, my God, I am like, I need to practice being seen before anything else, before I go online, before I say, oh, I'm dating. I'm like, this is my journey. So yeah. I did. I started practicing that. And then I started really enjoying being seen. And then I had another problem. Then I had to learn how to talk to you guys and flirt. You know, it's like one thing to be seen, <laughs> another thing to have a conversation. Right. And so All right. obviously there's another story after that. But that's yeah, where so, yeah, be before you go to that, I, I want to pause for a moment because I, I want to get to a punchline, Kimmy, and that is something that excited me about this conversation because, you know, first I thought to myself, well, most podcast listeners are anonymous, meaning I don't know who's listening to this podcast and I certainly don't know who's dating and who's not dating. But what I discovered in listening to your podcast and consuming your content, we talked about this before we press record, is that time and time again, people that you work with in the quote unquote dating scene go through a self-discovery process. Mm. So would you speak to that? Yeah. And um, self-discovery is, is huge. And I think that's what I love 
helping people so much with is it is that transformation. It's, it's, it's almost like a time to reinvent yourself. And especially if you're in this kind of midlife um, era that you're in, it's a beautiful time to, you know, say, what is it that I want? Who am I? Especially as coming into the singlehood, like who am I separate from my partner? You know, your identity gets wrapped up as a couple especially if it's been years and years and years, it's like, wow, this is a chance to emancipate myself, to like do things that I want to do in a whole new way and figure out what I want. I think that was the biggest thing. And that's something that a lot of people struggle with. Like I offer free calls for people and I'll ask that magic question of, you know, if you had a magic wand and waved it in the air, what would be different? Most people can't really tell me. They really don't know what they want. And so having clarity and also not having guilt around what it is that you want, that's where the self-discovery comes. Because once you figure out, hey, I just maybe want to have a little fun. I, I don't want a relationship right now. I want to like learn how to flirt. I want like really almost the skills that are needed to feel sexy, to feel confident. Then that's when you can start making a plan for that self-discovery and and do something about it. So yeah, like the makeovers are such an important part of that process. Getting new clothes, um, maybe, you know, some people end up getting a haircut, you know, that external shift that starts happening. Um, you and I were talking about working out, like people get healthier and during these times and maybe they start eating different, they work out more. And again, that all helps build on that confidence. But the other, I think, I don't know, discovery that happens is the social aspect as well, because you really get to see a, maybe a new tribe that you need in this point in your life. Hmm. And you use the phrase sexy confidence. Uh, let's unpack that a little bit, because on the surface, that can sound like something that people who are single, people who are in, dating, in the dating scene would care about. But you say that really everyone should want to enjoy and experience sexy confidence. You want to unpack that a little bit? Yeah, that's such a good question because, you know, I've been working with a lot of people who actually get into relationships, you know, even after they have been single. And one theme that everybody always wants to continue with is, and that is just feeling sexy, feeling attractive. And, you know, the way that I see confidence, I define it a little bit differently than a lot of people. I just think confidence is experience. That's all it is. And I don't believe there's one person out there who's not confident in something. It's just that they haven't had either enough experience or positive exposure to something to build on that, right? And so it's like when you first started your job, first day at work, you probably weren't that confident. How did you get there? You just kept doing it over and over and over again. And mm -hmm. now you could do it with your eyes closed. So sexy confidence is no different. So when it comes to like the midlife time, a lot of, in our own mind's eye, what happens is we see maybe if we did feel confident at one time, that person who was younger, maybe thinner, didn't have some of the stuff that was going on in their bodies. And so they look in the mirror and they're not feeling as attractive. And I always tell people, it's not about the man. It's not about the woman. It's about you. Because when you look in the mirror and you say, I got it going on that's when other people do too. And this is so important, not only if you're single, but in relationships as well. It affects the partnership. And so, you know, I usually work in three different areas of confidence, whether I'm building the sexy confidence or just confidence overall. And actually is it's the name of the podcast and that's the charisma quotient. I don't even know if you knew that. Oh so, yeah, I did, yeah. 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 So I've kind of these three pillars within the charisma quotient, the first one being what I call style intelligence. And that's kind of what we've been talking about, you know, overall, just how we dress, our body language, our energy, you know, how we kind of appear on the outside. Even knowing what colors are good for you versus colors that are not good colors for you. 
Oh, color's huge. Well, and if you want me to go into like tips in each area, we can after that, because I like, I love giving people quick tips because everybody could like do a closet audit right now. Yeah. Again, even if the listener is not in the dating scene, like I'm Doesn't not matter. in the dating scene, but Hey, I'm, I'm always open for tips. Absolutely. Well, everybody wants to feel attractive at the end of the day. I don't care how old you are. Like I've had, I've done a makeover and a whole like process and building someone's sexy confidence with an 85 year old woman. And do you know that she picked up a guy at a bar after doing the makeover with it? So it's like, you're never too old. You're never too young to like, not only feel youthful, but attractive as well. So the outside is the quickest way, if you think about it, there's not too many things in life that gets that instant gratification, right? And when you look in the mirror and you see something different, it, was, it is like my red dress moment. So yes, helping people with their color and clothes that flatter their body type. You know, I'm very scientific in the way I approach clothes because when you know what works for your body and what to stay away from, it helps build that body confidence in your clothes too. And so again, mm -hmm. you're going to appear different in the world. Now, the second pillar in building sexy confidence is also, I work with emotional intelligence, how we express ourselves. It's our vulnerability. It's our authenticity, how resilient we are, how we bounce back from things because we know we're worth it. So I think the internal is super important. And then the third pillar is your social intelligence, which is how we manage interpersonal communication. It's how we are comfortable in social situations. And yes, that includes flirting. Flirting is a big part of my business because when you learn how to flirt, that is that energy, that magnetism, that charisma that just draws people to you. And again, when you get that feedback, it helps you feel sexy. Okay. So again, symbiotic. I, I, I have a question for you on this, and I've been dying to ask you this question. And Kimmy, I waited until we're actually recording, even though you and I spoke before I, I pressed record. I waited for I us to it. be on the recording. Okay. So as I mentioned, I'm not on a dating scene. I've been married 36 years. Can I still flirt in a way that that is not, you know, egregious, that it's not uh, mis, it's not malintended, you know, but still in a way that is uh, received well, again, but that's my concern. Like, I don't want to create the impression that I'm flirting from a mate standpoint to pick somebody up because that's not my intent, but can I still do that? I'm, I mean, I'm, yes, I'm asking for myself or I could say for a friend, right? But for anybody <laughs> like me, right? Yeah. To speak to that. Yes. Never stop flirting. Whether but how? How do I do that without giving the wrong impression? Right. But flirting, just the the word flirting in itself, like it causes alarm for a lot of people. Like people have a lot of reaction when they hear that word. And what I'm gonna start with is actually the definition of flirting, because until okay. you like really define what flirting is to you, it's going to be hard to actually flirt because if you have a, like to your point, if you have like a highly sexualized behavior associated with flirting, or maybe something happened to you when you were younger and you're scared, like I always like to tell people what is flirting to you. But when you look in the the dictionary, <laughs> this is fascinating for the actual official definition of flirting. You know what it is? It is to behave as though you are attracted to someone without the serious intention of an outcome. I think that's fascinating because if you think about it, that last part is why people don't flirt. People are worried about what's next. They're worried about feeling awkward or giving off the wrong impression, like the things that you were saying. Mm -hmm. But it's not supposed to be about any of that. It's actually just a playfulness and a fun element to you that feels good for you, but that again, draws people to you in a very fun and playful way. Now, what you do with it afterwards is up to you. You know, right. I always tell people like, wouldn't it be a like horrible problem to have? Like if you're a woman that you would have like 10 guys flocking to you and then, you know, women are like, well, but I don't want to give the wrong impression. It's like, you're, you're getting way ahead of it. Like you're not going to move on and have a play date with anybody <laughs> who you don't want to move on with. And I, I like to use the metaphor 
of children. Like children are fantastic. They're natural flirts, right? Because they haven't developed filters yet. They won't look at somebody on the playground and be like, oh, I shouldn't bother Betsy. She looks really busy or I, you know, worried about what's next. They no. Little Johnny will go up to Betsy and say, hi, can I play or want to play? So what happens to us is that, right, like society, um, our own relationships, things happen that, and then we develop these filters because our walls go up. But when, when I teach this stuff, it's just so beautiful to watch people letting go. I work with a lot of high achievers and people who are in their head a lot and they're always worried about this stuff. And, you know, really it's not about what's next. It's not about worrying about the past. It's worrying about what is, and that's being in the moment. Um, I, you and I were talking about this. I do these dating retreats. And what's so fun about them is just helping people get into that flirtatious state. And I actually do a, a scavenger hunt with them. And I give them prompts where they have to go out in the world and do silly things. I give these um, these these little ears to <laughs> cat ears to the women so that they get, you know, more playful. And I give guys little costumes too. And initially they're absolutely terrified. They're like, oh, there's no way I'm going to do this stuff. And then they come back laughing, mm -hmm. you know, the women's hair is a little down They They look fantastic. They're, and it's just, again, it's like getting out of the head and getting into the body. And really that's what flirting is about. Now, when I teach flirting, there's a lot of different elements of it. I mean, it's the stuff we're talking about. It's how you dress. It's your body language. It's your conversation skills. It's all of those things. But in that in that context, you're teaching flirting to people who are in a dating scene. So they are looking for an outcome that is, I guess, romantic, right? Potentially romantic anyway. Whereas, but I actually take that away from them. Like I, cause really what I tell people is as long as they're working with me, I, we don't focus on the boyfriend or the girlfriend. We focus on having them feel good about themselves oh, and okay. then they can attract what it, you know, whatever it is they want. And in fact, all my clients will tell me, they're like, Kimmy, this is changing my entire life. This really has nothing to do with dating. I say, yeah, <laughs> you're finally getting that, aren't Self -discovery. you? Self-discovery. Yes. Self-discovery. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, it's, it's beautiful. There's one of the women I just spoke with actually, and she came on my podcast because I often do these like, where are they now episodes? So people could hear the success stories. And she worked with me and then she went to my dating retreats. I mean, I have a lot of different programs, but um, what was so awesome to see is that she was that person who was so riddled in fear of what other people thought. She was constantly worried about, you know, giving off the wrong impression, very in her head, very outcome oriented. And I was just teaching her how to relax, be more in the moment, really focus on connecting with the person, every single person, because you never know what connection can come out of it. Well, mm -hmm. she just proceeded to tell me that she met a guy she's really happy with. Obviously, she did a lot of work, you know, as we were working together. But she went to the speed dating event and she went in with that mindset. She's like, I'm just going to flirt and have fun with everyone. That's my motto. And she really connected with this guy and he's fantastic and very different than any of her guys. She, she's breaking a pattern because she's not so into like the anxiety of everything that she's been like dealing with in the past. And she's like, Kimmy, this is so much easier. I'm so much happier. And I don't even care what happens because for the first time, I really feel like I have me now. Hmm. Wow. Again, power of self-discovery. And I mean, who would have thunk that from a, dating coach, right? Because, but, but you come, you came to this whole profession as a dating coach and I hope you're okay with me framing it up that way. But, oh yeah, yeah, no, totally. Okay. But as a therapist, I mean, you were a therapist before you went through your own sort of transformation. First of all, your own journey, which then enabled you to go through that transformation. And then you pivoted to helping people in the dating scene but you're still driving self-discovery, which is so powerful. And that was, that's why I was so excited to have this conversation with you because I wasn't really expecting that at, at first. I thought, you know, I haven't right. talked about dating on the podcast, right? Let's talk about dating. 
And then I came to realize as I binge listen to your podcast and your, your content, like, okay, there's something bigger here. Mm, thank you. And I'm, I'm so glad that you're getting that too. And to piggyback off of that, the reason why also I'm really passionate about the dating scene is really helping people in midlife who are single getting sure. back out there sure. because it is so daunting. And we do go through these like transformations and reinventions and rediscovery of ourselves. And, you know, the, up until now, there just hasn't been a lot of focus on people dating in the second act, as I call it. And it's the number one growing population right now. And so I'm glad that there's finally focus on this because it really is rebuilding confidence again. You know, the funny thing about my story, and I don't know about you, like as you've gone through like different parts of your life, like I really thought I was a confident person before my divorce happened. You know, I never would have thought, looking in the mirror, I'm like, oh, I'm not confident. But when that divorce happened, it was like, it was shattered. Like completely, everything that I knew that I thought I knew literally was like squashed. And so then it made me question everything, you know, about myself. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people because you think your life is one way until it's not. And it forces you to look in the mirror and say, all right, what are some changes that I need to do? And to me, that's where the empowerment is because you can't change other people. You can't change what's around you. All you can do is, is look at yourself and do something different to get a different result. And that's really what I'm about, you know, helping people with strategies so that they break patterns. Yeah. You know, I'm going to share a personal story here. Um, when I was 24, I woke up one day and I looked in the mirror. I was bare chested and I did not like what I saw. Kind of similar uh -huh. to your experience. I had a little bit of a belly and I had no muscle tone at, at 24 years old. You know, I was just out of shape. And it was because of the lifestyle that I was leading at that time. And uh, a light went off or a switch went off in my head. And from that day, that moment forward, I committed to a regular fitness routine. And that was 40 more, 42 years ago, 42 years ago. And from that day forward to this day, I work out five days a week. And oh. I still have, even at this age, have muscle tone, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have the, the belly that I had when I was 24. And so I don't know if you want to call it sexy confidence because I don't think of it as sexy confidence, but you know what, Kimmy, it does give me confidence because I work at it. You mentioned this client of yours that she got to an outcome, but she worked at it. I worked at it and I still work at it. It's not something that just happens by itself. I have to put the work in and that's, that's a big takeaway from this conversation is that people who work with you work at it and then they have this self-discovery, which as your client said, is much more than just dating. It's so much more. And I love that you're highlighting the fact that it takes work and it's continued work, right? Because each part of our journey you know, there's a lot of twists and turns in the road and it leads us to another path where maybe we have another discovery about ourselves that we have to like work on and to never stop growing, to always see this as important. Because, you know, then a lot of my clients get into relationships. You and I were talking about that. And then there's this kind of state of complacency that ends up happening with couples. And you end up, you know, sitting, watching TV and sweats, eating Chinese food every day. And you forget the art of getting dressed up and dating each other and sparking that sexy again. It's so important, no matter what phase you are in your life. So I'm, I'm glad that we're having this discussion. The, the most profound story. I'll never forget this because it relates to exactly what we're talking about. It was a woman. It was She was approaching the midlife whole thing. She was divorced. She had been divorced for 20 years by the time she picked up the phone and called me. And she's like, Kimmy, I have not been dating this whole time. I've been just busy immersing myself in work. I don't really have any single friends. I haven't even dabbled on any of the apps. Like, I don't even know where to start. 
Now, originally, she didn't really tell me how she was feeling about herself. She just wanted to get back out there and she didn't know how. So she did a whole experience with me. We did an intensive. I often take people shopping and we go out in the field and I teach them how to flirt. Like I'm kind of like hitch meets whatnot to wear if you know those references. So um, I this I, this was an unbelievable story. So when she comes here to L.A., I realized there was a lot more to her story and be, before we even did anything, I wanted to go shopping with her and we are about to walk into the store and she starts crying and okay. I'm like, what's up? And she's like, I, I don't think I can do this. I said, what's going on? She's like, well, there's something I didn't tell you. So what's that? She's like, well, I, I cover all my mirrors at home and I haven't looked at myself in 15 years, literally. Mm -hmm. So I said, I totally get now. Had I been a traditional therapist, maybe I would have sat down, did a little cognitive therapy on her and, you know, help her with her vision. And that's not what she needed. She needed to see herself, period. So I said, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just put these boots on and I want you to put this jacket on and I want you to twirl around and just give me five seconds in the mirror. That's it. That's just, just let's just try it. So she does it. And she's looking at herself. And again, red dress moment. She's just staring at herself. And she goes beyond the five, right? Five, six, seven. And now tears are going down her cheeks. Same thing. But this time it was tears of joy. And she says, I've never seen myself look so beautiful. Mm. And we're both hugging. Now I'm crying. And then from there, I created a monster. Because then we start skipping through the store. And she, she was trying things on with the door open. I mean, this is a woman who had body shame, was not feeling sexy. And then we did a photo shoot. We did her hair and her makeup. And I mean, she was on cloud nine. And she went back home. And she put herself online with the new pictures and started dating up a storm. And she landed a great guy eventually. So wow. again, it all started with that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What a great story. What a great story. Let's wrap it there, Kimmy. But first, first, please let the listener know um, where they can connect with you. Where are you? What your world, as well as just any specific tools and giveaways and all that that you might have. Oh, yeah. First of all, thank you so much for having me. This, I loved our conversation. And yeah, like, I mean, you can pretty much find me anywhere. All my socials are at Kimmy Seltzer. It's K-M-M-Y-S-E-L-T-Z-E-R. My website is KimmySeltzer.com. And you mentioned my podcast is Charisma Quotient. I'd love to talk to anybody who is struggling or just even to have a free session to brainstorm how I can help. But the other thing, since we're to actually, this just came to me from our conversation. I'd love to gift your audience my style guides. So for women, these are, this is a way for them to determine what body type they are. And it's just measuring your, your shoulders, your waist, your hips. And then my guide goes over what clothes flatter that figure and what clothes to stay away from. And for men, there's a man's fashion manifesto that goes over tips for men because men need a little tips. I'm sorry. Like you guys don't focus <laughs> on it enough. Um, and you can just go to KimmySeltzer.com forward slash style to pick those up. And yeah, I mean, I think that's the best. You know, I do these virtual workshops. Um, every month I have a new theme. They're all like around dating. Um, and depending on when you listen to this, if you go to stophatingdating.com, it'll show the next workshop that I do. And those are all live and interactive and co-ed. Stophatingdating.com. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Kimmy, all that, all that will be linked up in the show notes for this episode. Kimmy, thank you so much for joining me for this episode, a maximum episode. This is a fascinating topic. And honestly, it, it went in a direction that I wasn't expecting, but I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Kimmy. Thank you.